the Poisson probability model for the African elephants. In this case, we will just give an example of testing a hypothesis here for the mean parameter. So we will test whether the true population parameter is 2 or greater than 2. So in this case, the null hypothesis is that it's equal to 2 and the alternative is it's bigger than 2. So we know that we are sampling here from a normal distribution approximately where the mean is lambda and the variance is sigma squared upon lambda. So the mean here is going to be lambda and the variance, we're looking at the mean here, so it would be variance which is sigma squared upon n sigma squared for the Poisson distribution is equal to lambda. And so the p-value of this test is probability that the observed proportion we've got over here given lambda is equal to 2 is as extreme as we've got. So lambda hat is bigger than lambda hat observed given lambda is equal to 2. What we observed here from the data was what we've got here lambda hat observed. We calculated that in the last lecture. And so we're giving the mean as 2 from the null hypothesis and the standard deviation is square root of 2 over n and it's probability, the normal distribution we want here. And so by putting lower tail equals false, we're looking at a probability of being bigger than. That comes to point triple zero nine nine three two. So that means that we have enough evidence here to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the mean number of matings is bigger than two. So that's our hypothesis test for the Poisson distribution will proceed. And if you take a look at the Poisson distribution here, with the mean as we have estimated it. Then we do a plot of the probability mass function. You can see that it's fairly close. The actual frequencies against the probabilities we estimate from the Poisson distribution are fairly close. As we noted earlier, there's a problem here with this extra weight at 9. But other than that, it looks fairly good as a good approximation of the Poisson distribution. In the regression model, all we're going to do now is going to model the parameter lambda here in terms of a regression analysis. So we're saying that the expected value here of yi, which is lambda i, depends in some way on the age i of the elephant. Now, as we said earlier, it's not quite as so straightforward. With the Gaussian regression, the mean is mu, and that's what we model directly. For the binary, the mean is pi, at least for the Bernoulli is pi. And there we model the log of the odds ratio. In this case, what we model is log of lambda, log of the mean. So the idea here is that lambda is bigger than zero. So it's the mean, so it must be bigger than zero. Equal zero means like nothing's happening. And so it's log of lambda here that we will model as a regression. So often these models like the logistic regression model and this Poisson regression model are called log linear models because it's the log of something we'll model here in terms of a linear regression here. If we turn the equation around for log lambda, we find that lambda i here is the exponential of the right hand side. And so that's how we can estimate the mean rate for any particular values of the covariates. So in the end, the probability, of course, of uh, yi equals y, yi is lower yi, but the probability of a particular number of mating is still given by the Poisson distribution, except the mean here, now the lambda, is given by this regression over here. And of course, because it's an exponential we're looking at, exponential functions always be given zero, so we know here that lambda will be bigger than zero. So that will be what the setup is. We know the mean and the variance here are the same, so that means as the mean gets bigger, so does the variance. So the spread should increase as the mean gets larger. We'll see what this means later. In terms of a plot over here, if this is the value of x, which is essentially the, the uh, parameter, the covariate here that determines the mean, then as the mean increases, as x increases in the case, then we expect the spread here of the Poisson distribution to increase. And as we said earlier, it becomes more and more like the normal distribution for large means. How do we interpret the coefficient here in this case of regression? 
Well, the word lambda a here is the exponential of this equation of regression. And if I take a look at the value for one of the coordinates as a, and I put the value a here for that, then of course exponential over sum is just the product of the exponential. So this equation here becomes exponential of the first thing times exponential of the second and so on. If I increase that particular covariate by 1, if I increase x1 by 1, then my new equation here is going to be with a 1 there. If I split that up in terms of the product of exponentials, and then further split this term up into product of these two things, we'll find everything else here is exactly the same, except I've got this extra e to the beta 1. So an increase of 1 in a covariate results in the increase of e to the beta 1, in this case, e to the beta of the parameter, of the, of the covariate, the parameter of the covariate, that's by the factor that the mean increases. So previously the mean was lambda a. If I increase the a by 1, then the mean increases by a factor of e to the beta 1. So you can see here that can be quite large if beta 1 is positive. So we just said that earlier, that if beta 1 is bigger than 0, then the increase is by e to the beta 1, which is bigger than 1. If beta 1 is equal to 0, then that's, there's nothing happening here at all. And if beta 1 is less than 0, then the change actually is a decrease by the factor e to the beta 1. Then here's an example over here. If beta 1 equals 0 0.05, the average rate of increase in this case would be e to the beta 1, which is 1.05. In other words, an increase of 1 in the var variable for which beta 1 is the coefficient would mean that the mean increases by about 5%. Whereas if beta is negative 0 0.05, then here the change is going to be e to the negative 0 0.05, which is 0.95. So this is a decrease of about 5% instead. The parameters can be estimated by many ways. What we'll be using here is maximum likelihood. And so the model fit is again by the GLM command. Nothing much changes here. But the only thing that changes here, as you'll see, is the family is not anymore binomial, but it's Poisson. So exactly the same command, GLM, my response is matings. And the correlated here is age. Data is elephant, and the family is Poisson. If you just specify Poisson, you don't require to specify the link because the default link is log. The output is familiar and similar to the outputs of other models. It gives us the initial call of the model itself and some of the summaries of the residuals. Then it gives us the coefficients with p-values. So we can see here the p-value is quite small for both the intercept and the age coefficient. So the age here has a significant effect on the number of matings. And then, as we saw before, it gives a null deviance, null meaning that if we omit the correlated age from the model, and the residual deviance, if we actually include that, the difference in those two is in the order of about 24. And the degrees of freedom here is only a difference of one here. So even as we see later on, if we use here the dropping deviance test, we'll find the null model is much better, sorry, the, recid the fitted model is much better than the null model. In this case, then, the expected value here of the number of matings should be e to the beta naught plus beta 1 times age. Put the values in there, so I can see here that a one-year increase in an adult male elephant will result in an exponential of the coefficient, 1.07. In other words, 7.1% increase in the average number of matings over an eight-year period. And I can estimate the number of expect, expected number of matings for any particular age of elephant. If an elephant is 27 years old, that means if I put in 27 in the equation, I get the average number of matings over an 8-year period. Average number of successful matings over an 8-year period is only about 1.3 or so. So 
that would show that the population of elephants will actually grow quite slowly. In first, we saw the p-values actually from the output, which uh, from the walls test, the confidence intervals we've calculated before, or shown how you can calculate those, and the drop-in deviance test can be used as before. As far as the walls test is concerned, all we need to do is, it's always a two-sided test as we saw. The p-value comes from the output of the regression analysis here, and we saw earlier here the p-value is quite small, which means that at the 5% level of significance, we have conclude that elephant 8 is a significant correlated or significant in the average number of matings, and it's positively associated, so as the age increases, the expected number of matings also increases, that's because beta actually is positive in our model. 95% confidence interval based for, for beta 1 based on the output, the output gives us the standard error, and the mean value of the parameter. So all we have to do is put in the equation for the confidence interval, and there it is. You can calculate it about quite easily here. As you saw earlier in, I think, the lab questions, or maybe in the lecture questions, I had actually worked out the confidence interval by using the confidence interval command from the library mess. We can do similar here, and we'll see that it's wrong. And as before, the confidence interval has a frequent distance interpretation, which means that if you repeatedly sample 40 elephants from the same population, and we take a look at over an eight-year eight period, and we take a look at 95% confidence intervals from those repeated samples, we'll find that 95% of the confidence intervals on average will contain the pre true, true parameter value of beta 1. Here's the plot of the age versus number of matings, and uh, we've got in that the plot of the uh, fitted line from the regression. So we've got the average or the expected number of matings, and you can see here that uh, there's an increase over age. It's exponential, so it'll be curved. But you'll also be able to see that we said earlier that as the mean of the Poisson increases, so will the variance, which means for the lower means here, we've got a smaller spread, and for the higher means, we've got a much larger spread. So that's what we expect to see in this kind of plot. Now, the other question we asked was whether the rate of successful matings declines as age increases, and we can test that by putting in an exponential term, and the idea is if this exponential term has a negative coefficient, that would tend to mean that there'll be a decline as we go further in age. Or if you like, the log of lambda i is this the linear equation of regression. We fit that in the model, we've seen this before, that what we want to do is put in age and age squared, which means we put in this i term here. So this essentially means you're going to calculate that in the model itself, not before it. You've tried that without putting h squared in there, you'll, without putting the i there, you'll find a different effect. You can try that if you wish. But this is how it works. And the output here indicates to us, well, certainly now the model has no significant variables at all. And certainly h squared isn't significant. It's a very large p-value, and so we'd conclude here that age squared isn't a significant term. In this case, the drop-in deviance test agrees with the wall test as well. So, from the constraint model, so if we take a look at the model here with age squared and without age squared, so compare this, this residual deviance here with what we got when we had the model with just age in there, you'll find the drop in deviance is very small, is 0.186, and with one degree of freedom here, the p-value will be very large. So certainly, you will not, in this case, take the age squared as a significant term, and the model without age squared is a better model. You can also test the two models by ANOVA, similar test or same test, and in this case, the test chi squared is default. If you don't put that in there, they'll still do a chi squared test. The p-value is very much the same. So either way, it looks like 
in this case h squared is not a significant variable and that means that as far as the rate of successful matings is concerned it doesn't decline over age. Model adequacy works in a similar way. We'll take a look at things like fixed values against the pseudo-walls here. We can also find the goodness of it test which we're not going to here. But if we take a look and say the residuals versus the fitted values, you will find that there will be some increase as the fitted values increase. We know the spread also increases. We've seen that before. That's with the PS of residuals. But if you standardize the residuals first, by essentially taking the mean away and dividing by standard deviation. So the PS of residuals in this case here, sorry, these were just the raw residuals. But the PS of residuals, if you actually take a look at those, you will find that, have a look at this, we've got uh, the residuals here at Pearson, and now you'll find that this will be in a band as before. There should be no change in spread in this case. We expect the usual behavior for residuals here. No patterns and random scatter of points. So that almost finishes this lecture. We've got here the Poisson probability model, as you've discussed here. We've got the log linear model here for the Poisson distribution. And the coefficient interpretation is before a unit increase in a variable will change the mean by a factor of e to the beta or the, the uh, coefficient of the variable. We fit the model using the GLM function. We can take a look at confidence intervals. We can take a look at Wall's test and drop in Devin's test as well as model assessment based on piece of the intervals, which will be better to look at because that gives you the usual standard pattern we expect to see in the interval plots. That's all for this week. Thank you. Bye.